Hey y'all, it's Jenny Mosley, and we are here live with the Elevate Effect. It's time to take the dental field to a whole nother level. Fly with me, folks. Let's get real and let's get uncomfortable. Hello, Hello. Ricky and Jenny. Finally, we're back. We're Shee back. Dewey. How long has it been? Yeah, man. It's been a minute. And we also took a little break. Um, I don't know that everybody realizes how we do these or right. when we do these. That's why we look but, the way we look. Let's you know, explain. It's, it's Let's why. explain. <laughs> we look like this because. So it's, we look this way, greasy and shiny. disheveled. Because it's the end of our day. We've seen patients all day. Then we have a meeting and then we come straight in and, and we do this after all that. So some days, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, or, or, you know, it's funny, just like anybody in the dental field's going, oh, I get you. I totally get you. Now, deep down, of course, yeah. you know me, I always try to look at things as, as some kind of opportunity. I, I This is almost like, remember when we used to drive to Beaufort to work? And it was like, my husband's asked me yeah. one day, how did you do, after a while, like after three years, how did you do it for three years? I'm like, well, honestly, it was awesome to have a place to decompress so sometimes this, it, yeah, truly. sometimes, I mean, then I get in the car after these sometimes and like, just like asking for feedback from a patient, you know, say it, let it get out. Cause then you go, oh, perfect. I move on. So it, it is, it, even though we're trying to explain to you why we look like this, it still is a positive <laughs> moment. So hopefully you all can connect yes. with us today. The Ricky and Jenny show. Ding. So we had a ding. We need a soundboard. We have one you <laughs> Bing. <laughs> so we had somebody ask a question and before i ask what the question was i wanted to ask you a question that we ask when we have other people on we ask okay. this question so um i think it'd be good to start off with this <laughs> okie dokes wow <laughs> so, so clear um, the question is, who are you? So can you tell everybody that maybe it's their first time listening or maybe they've been listening for a while and they don't really know who, they maybe have never met you or worked with you personally. Can you explain who you are? Okay. Uh, well, how about I explain what I could possibly be for somebody? Because I guess to me, sure. I live my life to be something for somebody else. Um, so, and hence why I think Era, Ricky and I are what we are because I think I'm a person in a profession that doesn't always tend to connect with the profession, but I utilize my passion, my balance of the wheel of life to incorporate in a profession to find success. So I ele the Elevate Company and now the Elevate Effect was designed to allow for people to see that this profession can go to new heights, go to next levels, become epic in your own way. And so if you ever want to take yourself, your profession, your relationship, your financial, whatever it is you want to do and you want to always take it to the next level, that's who I am to somebody. And, um, you know, if something won't go to the next level, I just don't do it anymore. Hygiene, for example, but we, we won't go there because we don't want to upset people. We, we don't want to upset today. people not already. Today. It's only been a couple of minutes. That's not, oh my God. Yeah. So I, that's what I, I mean, I know that's, again, that's how I speak where it doesn't really give an answer, but, um, if somebody is listening, I just think that, you know, if, you know, just from two very measly people sitting in Savannah, Georgia, trying to make it and kill it in life. If you want to just be inspired, that's what I feel this, this does. And we do, and I have tried to cultivate is, you know, always wanting to yeah. be better. So knowing that, um, somebody asked a question about Ooh. leadership. So, and now, okay, go ahead. And, and really you've been doing it for a while now. You've been in a leadership role for a few years and what have you learned through that? And then what do you think works better, positive versus negative? Well, one, I must say that I, I honestly think there are professionals that are, are understand true leadership. And so I would never, 
I would never try to portray that I am, am a professional at, at being in a leadership role. I just am somebody who continually wants to learn how to be the best I can without claiming that I'm incredible at it because it is very difficult. Um, I appreciate those um, that understand the difference. I think a lot of people buy a business and become an owner and think they automatically are a leader. And I, it is, I believe that is so off base. And so the ones like me that only that, that recognize that and then have to constantly work at it. I think that you become a better leader when you actually can serve your own purpose too. So if you're walking a walk that you want others to then also do, then they have to see that you're doing it yourselves. And so that to me is, you know, at the best version of a leader that I can be. Now, I've been around, you know, um, pretty incredible leadership people that are just incredible um, and have taught me a ton of stuff. And I would never even, like I said, try to even pretend I'm even a quarter of what they have in their head. But if you don't have that education and you don't have that, um, you know, we spend so much time in the dental field um, learning so much other things. I mean, we don't have, we don't make the time to go learn about it. So I tried to coach myself up on following mentors like uh, Brian Tracy's and Zig Ziglar's and John Maxwell's and things like that and tried to connect myself with people like that. But honestly, everywhere I read and, and, and go, you can't be it if you're not it yourself. Positive versus negative leadership. Well, we, before you answer that, I would like you to define what you think positive leadership is and if you can, and what negative leadership is, because I think hearing your answer based on what you believe it is might help people hear your answer better. Well, I feel like I would know both because I have done negative ridiculously. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably better at that. So, um, yes. I love to learn. No. Um, so I had a really, really, um, amazing person in my professional life uh, for a few years, a few years ago. And, and honestly, she, 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 I, I learned so much from her, uh, like, you know, and I'll every day take it everywhere. Um, and a lot of the stuff that you learn through people like that. And like I said, these other mentors that I'm just reading from, and I, I like I said, I'm trying to have interviews with their companies just to kind of keep myself up to speed. But, um, I, I, I feel like positive leadership or, or to me is, if you can impact somebody to positively grow and want to grow. Um, I think that, you know, sometimes you have to, I, I don't think the way that I am should have to do with being positive or negative. I think it's the way they react to it is what creates my, for example, if I, if I am in, if I'm do something positive and they, but they still don't learn and grow, I don't feel like that's positive leadership. I don't think the word positive means just be happy. Um, at the same time, there is ways that you're negative and it, it, it defeats a person. So I think a mix of the two is really helpful. For example, I think you have to learn how to really be creative to bring up negative things that create positive outcomes. So that yeah. to me is a hard thing to do because when a negative thing happens, it's hard to not be negative about it. And so you have to figure out how to turn it into a positive outcome. And so, um, if for, you know, an example, so you sent an email. I did. Yeah. Is this for real? Can we do this? Okay, perfect. Yeah. So you sent an email and you know, mm -hmm. we are, I, I, I believe we're, we're a little legacy here. We're really proud. It's, it is, you, you it is, it was neat today because we had a couple people follow us and it gives us a perspective because I think when you're in it every day, you forget how, how different and amazing it is. You just, it, 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 you get, you take advantage of it. I mean, we all, and not in a negative way. I just mean, it just, 
and to hear somebody who's been in the dental field 20 years to go, oh my gosh, like, whoa. Or to hear somebody that used to be here come back crying and just saying, I, I mean, I walk in and it's like, gosh, I, I'm, I'm just so proud to have another chance to be back here again. So, um, but it takes a leader that understands the vision and doesn't leave it and, and, and stays in that balance wheel, if you will, that we talk about constantly, that constantly, if, if I, if I'm, if I'm thinking of a patient constantly, I'm always thinking, do we deliver constantly? So when, when we have somebody that needs to stop by the office, this seems so minor, but if they have to stop by the office, we don't just do it randomly. And so I uh, brought up, I said, hey, you know, so Erica sent an email and I asked if we could talk about it today because she mentioned Bonnie was going to stop by tomorrow. So I said, what were we to do in following up with that email to, to set the standard of service? And it went to an, a, somewhat of a very passionate conversation that could have led to a lot of negativity. Um, and I felt like it was an example of a positive leadership, even though I was in an, it, it could have for many felt like, you know, how you always say in some uh, practices or in some offices, the open door policy and the way we speak is not normal. Well, yeah, it's not. I, yeah. I don't, well, think, I don't, I think everyone has, has agreed. Or, or I think that people um, think that they do it, but they, they don't do it to the depth that. Yeah. So we done. brought it up and then an employee who's been here a while was saying, well, I mean, things change all the time. So, and I said, well, wait, and then and that's where, you know, my passion gets strong because deep down the service, the system of service never changes, but you navigate around having less employees, you navigate around computer problems, you navigate around it. But in the end of the day, the patient shouldn't know what we're going through. They should think we're Disney World. Yeah. And so that everything happens, that same consistency of service. And so we went back and forth in this thing. And I think it could have from anybody's perspective felt like a negative conversation on my end because I got very heated to stand for what's right for the practice by saying, listen, this woman is investing a lot of money and a lot of trust and a lot of time into our practice to deliver. If we expect her to do something for us out of her way, don't you think she deserves to have the service connected to it as to why she would want to do it? And so if you, if you look at this person and she's a person that doesn't, is not as hard to schedule, uh, it, what would make that a better setup? This type of person probably needs an appointment. She probably needs to see how important this is. Plus, could our front in being low staffed are they going to be available? Is she going to walk in the office and go, hello, I'm chopping off my bag. Anybody here? And so it, those kinds of things to me is positive leadership, is keeping the consistency of the walk of whatever your vision is alive. And if it gets into a heated conversation, you stay in it until the two of you but we got to a resolution. Now I have been, I would say 90% of the time I am wrong, but I was proud of myself <laughs> today because I had two people there watching me to take it to a level of, Hey, let's work this out. I'm passionate right now because I am passionate about that patient's experience. I'm not passionate right now to be negative towards you, but I need to stand to what's right. So I think that to me is what is the difference. And when I go to negative leadership, I think it's when I allow the passion to stop the collaboration with the employee to let them learn. I just get so frustrated that it's like, forget it. Or, or I yeah. use language or wording that defeats them. That's not positive because their outcome isn't positive. But at the end of the day, the employee said, you know what? I get, I get it now. And I said, and I, and, and she said, now you probably heard me too, literally. And I said, you're probably right. So it was a, it was a, it was to me that, that, that but it, that takes effort. That takes care. That takes the ability to have time. And we're all, you know, I mean, we all make mistakes. And like I said, it's, that's, it's not a hard, it's not easy to do. So if anybody claims that being a leader is easy or yeah, I know how to be a leader. I mean, I just, it, it's 
crazy. So that's an example. So to me, because you're moving into somewhat of a management slash role that people may see you as a leader, I would never allow myself to have that email end. I would then question my team. Why didn't any of you question me? And say, okay, I mean, you know, wait a second. We can't do that for her. Well, I mean, we can do this right now if you want, but talk about this email because in my eyes, sending it, I don't know if this is, we can cut this out later if we want, but um, let's do it. Ready? Okay. <laughs> I'm not scared of anything, so it's just weird that you're saying that. I'm not. I'm not scared of it. I just don't know if it's worth listening to. That's well. I think what what a lot of people out there want though is is live scenarios. Is like, so here's a real scenario. Just happened two hours ago. Here's how a leader. Yeah, this literally. I sent this email at two o'clock, and it's four o'clock. But you're probably listening. Right. In 2024. So, right. Um. So I sent this email saying this patient would be coming back tomorrow to bringing her sleep study back. And um, she's also paying when she comes back. And she said she'd be in early afternoon. Okay, I did not put enough information here now that I'm rereading it. Well, wait so a second. Right. What, a good team, though, is... Well, yeah, you. like, again, back to, you know, to, uh, to me, a really good team is a team that it's not just one person. That would mean that then you're the superstar and you got to have all the answers. Yeah. You know, and so, true. but then a good leader is when I didn't see anybody respond, you would then in the future go, okay, guys, I didn't hear you respond to me. What did I not give you? That to me is mm-hmm. then positive leadership and you know now many would think that it's negative um because because what well what she said was early afternoon she said um i definitely can't be here before noon and i said okay so you're coming in the afternoon and she said well how late are you open and i said five o'clock and she said okay so I can come between 12 and 5. And I said, well, what time will you be here then? Because we want to be prepared and ready for you um, when you come. And she said, well, I have something until 12. And then my plan is to come here right after. So it's probably going to be between 12 and 1. Closer to 12 than anything. But that's not an exact time. Well, but none of that's in the email. But none of that's in the email. Now that I... Now that I read that, I thought that Well, was, but let's but go on not. and on with that. So, hey, guys, so he, he, let us give you the context. When you mm-hmm. become and want to become more of like a custom practice, you don't have a lot of patients. So when you, you, you your patient, each patient is investing more in themselves, so they deserve more time. So you don't want to see a lot of people because you really need to give them the extra time and the extra service because their, their, their journey is a lot more impactful. It costs more money. It's a bunch of different things. So we, we, I mean, everything, if they start off a way and they purchase something by the way they start off, we have to promise that everything from that point on gets the same level. And so, um, you know, for example, I mean, you know, it, it just, again, it's, it's really neat to kind of connect yourself as to even your personal life. Like we talk about, look, our focus group, it's going to be about, you know, time management equals life management. And so I'm, I, I do believe I am in the right role. Um, I do believe you're going into the right role. And the reasons for that is because just in my personal life, I mean, it's annoying. I'm just like, I need, I needed an exact schedule on everything. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, it's, it's frustrating. I'm very sure. Ask Erica, like, what time is this going to happen and how long is it going to be? And a lot of people from the questions I ask could, could assume that I'm just trying to either get out of it or whatever, but it's truly because I want it to, I want it to be delivered. Um, and so there are a lot of people that think like that and, you know, a language to Bonnie in, in, in a way is, is more of, Hey, I know this is a nuisance for you. I mean, you don't like, you know, you, you have an incredible life. We all want to live. I mean, she really does and she deserves it and she's loving life right now. And to make her come back and just randomly drop something off is frustrating. What? 
I mean, at this point, I mean, she's coming back again to see me. Why doesn't she just come, not come tomorrow and just come to that appointment? Now, the beauty, <laughs> now you are working with the computers, but that's another beauty of our, our, what we do is we have our meetings. If you were in that meeting, we would have went to that resolution, but we, you know, we didn't have that. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, you know, that's how a team would, if I didn't say anything, they would have waited for her tomorrow. And that to yeah. me is where the positive leadership comes in. It's like, do you have a vision in your practice or in your office or in your business? And if you do, do you stick to it? You know, we're having a new AC unit go in and it, it's it, this, this, the, the building, the way it was built was just very interesting. It's very difficult to do anything in it. And they had to go through all these different ways. I had to make holes and tear up our courtyard. It's, it blew my, blew my mind what they had to do to just get this AC unit in. But, you know, all I cared about every moment was what the patient's perception was going to be every single moment. And, you know, I, at one point I was in the office for a while working on administrative stuff and I walk out to go see a patient and I had to sit in the room right in front of it and I went off. And I thought, okay, if I'm not around, what happens? But that's positive leadership. Now, did I react negatively to some folks? Yes. Um, yeah. So that I could learn, uh, learn about. So maybe some examples of <clears throat> negative leadership is how I, yeah. they saw me react. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's a, it, it's a slippery slope. It's so hard. It's really hard. It's like, it's like parenting. I mean, you know, just because you have, you pop a kid out, people think they got a certificate. It's like, yeah, it's the heart of marriage. <laughs> I mean, any of it, you know, I'm yeah, looking at our true. real life that we always talk about. And it's really yeah. cool because all of those things, emotional, spiritual, mental, pleasure, profession, physical, social, material, I mean, really, if you just, if you think about it, um, all of those things are hard to accomplish. They all take, they're, they're all hard and they all take effort consistently and they all take, I think we were talking about this with Paul, but, you know, working, like working on them or pouring into them, they don't just happen. Like, like you said, being married, you don't just get married and then it works. <laughs> no, you no. <know? laughs> Uh, you have to, you have to work at it and you don't just, you don't just have a relationship with God because you say you do, you know, you have to work <clears> at it and you don't just have a good professional career because you've done it for 48 years. You have to work. Well, it. you know, I think that in, in a, in another <clears throat> example, um, there you have, you have problem solving as part of your DNA and you're in a profession. Like I, I have problem solving. You're in, in hygiene. You can't always solve people's problems and it, it can be very, and I, that's why I feel like where you're headed is where your wheel of life will be more balanced. Um, you experienced where you needed to be to see where you needed to go. And that's how I felt in there. Um, you know, I want to be able to see something and really work through it and then come up like you did today. Like that for us is like, that's fulfilling. Now mine is on a completely different planet than yours on a different planet. And that's why I feel like we would, we're in that, that, that would be good together. But you know, if anybody's listening out there, you know, listen, I mean, the dental profession doesn't have to hold you back. Um, you know, as Paul says, think outside of the box. Um, you know, but in regards to the leadership statement, um, I think if you facilitate a practice or, business that takes the time to sit down and really go over with your employees. We have these meetings and, you know, listen, you know how many times, I mean, it's at the end of the day, you, do you really want to sit in a room? I mean, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, after you've been uh, doing this so long, it's, it, I mean, that's major dedication. I, and I, I you know, not lately, I, luckily I'm able to make appointments and I'm able to kind of get out of here sometimes. And I still feel horrible um, because I feel like that is positive leadership. That the time that you're willing to take out of your own personal life to say, this is my de dedication to my team. 
I mean, I, I think it's huge. And I'm proud that we have that. I'm proud we have training days. Um, but in those meetings, um, are you just browbeating them? Are you just telling them what they didn't do? Yeah. And, you know, did you, did you sell anything today or did you do anything today? I mean, these meetings that we have aren't about that. It's about what, what did we all learn as a group? Did we do our dance? Do we treat our patients? Well, I mean, it's really more about that. The money comes, the, I mean, the money comes, the dentistry comes if everything else, remember 80, 20 rule. So, um, you know, positive leadership now. Have you ever been part of negative leadership? Me. Uh, okay. Yeah. Give me an example of negative leadership I've done. Um, mm -hmm. That you've done. <clears throat> it's got to be um, easy. It's like every day. There's so many to choose from. No, I'm just I mean, just, um, I think when you... I mean, you've gotten a lot better. Um, negative leadership from you. Or how about what do you think? How about this? How about this? What I think is negative is, you know, we have our meetings in the morning. And if before the meeting even starts or before we can even get through the agenda of the meetings, I think agendas for meetings are important just to make sure that they're consistent. Um, if we come right in with, a bunch of issues from the day before that for whatever reason it didn't get resolved and i understand why they need to be talked about because they need to be resolved but if that's the first thing we start with in my mind that's yeah negative. i mean i i think one of my worst downfalls and i hope people out there listening can and if they're in this a role like mine or like where you're going whatever i think negative leadership is if you're selfishly thinking you need to do something at the time you think it's right and not waiting till the yeah. right moment and i've always been, been bad at that um you know I, I, when it's hot i want to do it right then and that's just not appropriate and that to me yes is, is negative leadership for example like just saying the meetings you know they always work out better when they go by the ding agenda i mean what's the point of switching it up they're, more, they're a little boring that way but they always are yeah you know better that way. um so you know and i think it's helpful to hear your perspective versus just hearing mine because you know people you know we work with of at least we work with we feel good right now really i mean these teams we're working with right now are just really fun and by the way the slack app y'all is just awesome i mean and i got to respond to to michigan but um Shout out to yeah, Michigan man. team for using Well, the Slack and Jen app from um, from Austin, man, way to rocket sister. Like, and and again, uh, you know, uh, I I just I think it's great. Um, but what was the point of that? Oh, I'm sorry. They they uh. they truly. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of people want to hear from your perspective as an employee, as opposed to always my perspective. You know and how to deal with it. Yeah. Um, you know, some people can't be honest like you can with me to their leader. That's not easy. So it, I mean, it's still, it's still hard for me sometimes because I think I let my emotions get part of the way I respond to you because we have such an <laughs> odd relationship. Uh, which I don't even yeah. know how to explain it, but um, so I think that I respond to you a little different than I might different person but it is what it is but i do feel comfortable just being i mean i think i did it to you when before when you did that to me when i was traveling and it you know 7 30 in the morning and you're telling me all this stuff that i was not in the position to hear as i'm about to go do something that i was nervous about anyways i'm like this isn't this isn't productive right now such a, can we do this later because oh. i'll well, I'll hear, I'll hear you better later. That's it. I, that's the point. Do it. It's like thinking you're going, no. like they're even going to hear you. Yeah, it's silly. It's so yeah. selfish. So selfish. I mean, it's awful. But but still, you know, from my, in my position, I need to be willing to hear it. Well, how about this? Um, in the, let's say, let's say, let's talk about just our positions and not us as people for people that are listening. If you're in the leadership role, you, you guys, you, you got to be realistic. And I think there's a lot of leaders we work with or people in the leader role that think their team is comfortable with sharing with them and they're not. And we yeah. know it. And I just wish I, you would listen because um, they're not, they're not comfortable. Um, and I don't, 
I have to even work at it every single day um, to allow people to feel comfortable. Um, but I, I think the minute you think they're comfortable, they're not. And so don't, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm always wondering why people are still aren't talking to me more. I'm always like, why aren't you coming in my office more? Why aren't you doing this more? Um, so I, I, I tend to, to wonder if sometimes people in the leadership role feel like things are going well just because, and it's, uh -huh not a good thing. So, well, I, you, you got to have both, right? You got to have, you got to be able to hear the positives and the negatives. And as a leader, you got to be able to deliver both in a way that your employees are going to hear. Cause you don't want to just come in there screaming right. at them about everything that right. they did wrong. But at the same time, you don't want to ever not, you don't want to ever not address the problems. Cause I think I've been in that type of work environment as well, where Nobody ever wanted to ruffle right. any feathers, and that's right. also not good. Um, so you have to find that healthy balance, I think. Right. I mean, what's the word that that you say all the time? Confrontational tolerance. Yeah, I mean, like if we're all in a field that is truly uncomfortable, even if you're in the general setting or where we are in this custom side, there is the ability to communicate all over the place. And what's interesting is people feel weird talking to a patient in a certain way. So like I said, time management, life management, if they're not comfortable doing it in the vicinity of a stranger, they're sure as crap, not going to do it with you as a leader. So just don't kid yourself. Yeah, it's true. Your, your, your employees that are not able to do it in that room are not giving you the real, sorry, it's just not there. They don't yeah. have the ability yet. It's just developing the ability to confront and understand that no matter what the conf confrontation is, you see it as a positive. And that's hard to do because a lot of people can't do that. But that goes back to our, our, our balance in the wheel of life. And again, I watch some of these and I'm like, always watch myself looking up. It's weird, but I, I've got a whiteboard behind me, everybody. And so um, I got all, I got notes. I got the wheel of life. I got Jesus. I trust you. I got all this stuff. So I just, looking up there, not because I, I have like aliens or something, but it, it just helps guide me. And I, you know, one, I got Jesus's photo, which I love looking at, but in that balance of life, I mean, just recognize leaders. If your team member is not able to do it in the room, it's probably highly possible. They're not been able to do it to you with you yet. Um, so um, not that it's your fault. It means that the skill isn't there yet. Um, so uh, so yep. one last note, if the question was, what do you feel works best? How would you answer that? What do I feel? What, what do you feel works best? Positive versus negative leadership. I feel like a, is it, is it even possible to, answer? well, I do feel like they, I feel, again, I feel like you have to balance both of them. I think yeah. I really do. Cause you have to you have, it's so hard. You have to be able to yeah. deliver negative stuff to create positive outcomes. And so you have to have confrontational tolerance in a, in, and, and understand that if you are trying to deliver something negative and it does not get into a confrontation, then the person in front of you is not comfortable to. I, do, I just believe that. I mean, if you have a bunch of team members that every meeting you're like, like all they do is just stay quiet and listen, you ain't leading. Sorry. And I think again, back in the day in this building, and again, may cut this out too. I don't know. No, but you know, I think that a lot of people saw the minute that I started here, a person that had a voice and that was never here yeah. before. And when I had a voice, it meant I was listening to him. I wasn't just following. I was listening and actually learning and recognizing the difference that what you're saying is not happening. So <laughs> I think that the respect was there to go, wow, there is somebody actually like when I was willing to actually confront back, it meant that I was really hearing and learning and going, whoa, we got, we got something yeah. good here. 
uh, but then you're able to question it. So those are the employees that I believe are listening. And if your employees are not, and it stays quiet, like when we do classes, just like, you know, when it's quiet, you're like, okay, no one's engaged. We're obviously sucking right. at this. Um, when people say something I'm like, oh, yay, somebody asked a question. Cause not that I'm, that I, I need, I need, I need, I don't like silence cause silence is beautiful. It's that, that means that somebody heard something worthwhile to ask a question. And that means I actually impacted them. So I think they both need to be around. You just got to know how to balance them. You got to be okay with letting your team get stronger and stronger. And, and the more they get stronger, the more they're going to confront you. And you have to be okay with them. You got to open the door to let them confront you and um, learn and grow. So, so from a leadership point, be okay to be confronted. And from a employee point, be okay to confront. I think that is when you hit high performance together. Yes. I think that's, yeah. that's so when, both, I mean, you parties. know, look, you know, Ryan and I work together and I mean, I don't know if anyone has ever heard stories, but we get high together. Like the volume of confrontation is crazy talk. And I think that has a lot to do with why we get to a level of a high performance together sometimes because I'm, he's not afraid to confront me. I'm not afraid to confront him. And this could just be marketing stuff or whatever it is. And that, you know, I think you have to, you have to allow to, to, to come in. That's not easy to, to, to take, but, um, so, but it lands it, in a good it, place. It should, it does. It should. <laughs> well, poor, on that, on that note, note. Um, sorry, we're, you know, like, like I said, this has been a rough week for us. Sorry, our energy feels a little low. We, everybody knows yeah. what it's like out there to change out computers. Everyone's like, oh, I've done that. And then all of a sudden nothing works. That happened. At the same time, we had to get a new AC unit and then it was on back order. So that happened. And then we had two employees on, that we are really going to miss. I mean, honestly, one of them is one of the best concierges we've ever had. I mean, it is a sad moment, but uh, she's incredible and will kill it in life wherever she goes and fly high and we'll welcome her back, but she's moving because she's getting married. And then our other employee also is, is not well and she has to move back home to a different state to have her family take care of her. So um, it's just been, it's, but again, resilience is really built and greatness is built in the times of challenge and we will become better for this. Um, I will make sure of it. I mean, cause I, I, I love a good challenge and we are in one. So sorry about our, yes, we are our, our, uh, our downing, but just know, I mean, it happens to all of us, y'all. We all, I mean, everything is possible. If you just see why it's happening, stay in the wheel of life, stay in balance and it will all make its way out. Thanks for joining us for another episode. As you know, we're always looking for feedback, so please don't forget to give it to us. Let us know if there's anything you want to hear about. And don't forget to follow us on social media so you don't miss out on what's coming up next.